I think we were uh, uh, the crowd is He's the director of ready. this group, yeah, yeah. you know. I think we are separate as well. We, we just start. I think we're probably money. I think I'm on hold. Where is our leader? Tony's our leader, right? Am I? No. No, no man is All right, well then, leader. let's start. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Does that help? Yeah. I think we should start. Yeah, you should start. Okay. Uh, hello, my name is Kevin, and um, the title of my project is Performative Hybrids. And I'm just going to read a short uh, statement. Um, and then I'll move into the, the finer details of the project. Um, the function of a building can be seen as a complex behavior. An organism with multiple agents dynamically interacting in varied ways, following local rules to perform as one unified body. These agents, or building systems, are what allow them to perform the many tasks necessary to function in the realm of reality. This thesis will attempt to unhide these elements while also creating opportunistic hybrid conditions between them, triggering unique and unexpected spatial, aesthetic, and performative situations. Not only should they be exposed and expressed, but they should take on the role of adapted systems sinuously communicating between themselves and other architectural components. Elements can emerge, combine, expand, atrophy, disappear, etc. as they move throughout. Skin can adapt to become structure, structure can adapt to become mechanical, all happening freely and in plain sight. Architecture is not solely the act of generating form to be later rationalized and retrofitted with building systems for construction purposes. Architecture can benefit from seeing these elements as design opportunities rather than design obstructions. Um, so basically the project focuses on three of these uh, moments um, which are kind of laid out here. Um, there's the, this corner element which deals with the, the role of an exterior wall which basically has multiple roles built into the, the singular object where it's an opaque kind of uh, just concrete wall in, the, in this case and how that opaque surface tran transitions into uh, a surface with fenestrations or openings for, for light and how that transitions around the corner of the building. Um, so that's the first element. Uh, the second element is the um, the relationship between the exterior wall and an interior stair. Um, basically what I wanted to do was kind of focus on this joint between these two components where we have an exterior wall and an interior uh, circulation stair and how a kind of new piece of geometry can emerge between the two that's not uh, a default kind of condition or just a morph from one to another where I, I wanted to take control of that mediating geometry and kind of make it um, a designed piece. Here's a view from uh, the atrium into the gallery where you see the exterior wall transitioning to kind of be this in-between uh, piece of geometry between a, a regular stair and an exterior um, a glass wall system. Here's a view from basically up here looking up to the next level. So. That joint piece is is not quite exterior wall, not quite typical stair, but a, a kind of a mediating geometry between the two. But I guess the focus of that piece was about taking control of that moment. A, a lot of contemporary design or geometries and architecture are about creating two points or multiple points and letting the computer figure out what those connections would be which kind of uh, end up being kind of homogenous uh, features throughout uh, different projects. So what I wanted to do was focus on that. I, I wanted to create these, these multiple points or components and design that joint or that element between them to create something new or something different that, that's kind of specific uh, to my aesthetic style. Um, Meanwhile, not only is it a piece of geometry, but then it also starts creating uh, spatial or structural expressions uh, in the space where uh, here's that, that moment in the exterior of the building as well as in the interior. So on the exterior, it, it creates 
um, kind of this focal point, which ends up being the main pedestrian entrance into the building. While at the same time, it's not just an element, but it's actually a spatial component where when you walk in from uh, the main entrance, you're actually enveloped in this object. Um, and then the third component is um, the roof, which basically is an example of, of an object which moves through a space. And as it moves over a local area that needs, um, well, basically, this roof is, is transitioning from roof to structural element and then back into roof again. And the reason it's transferring into a structural element is because the main um, part, uh, ramp, vehicular ramp into the structure is, uh, it needs to be supported. So basically, when the roof moves through the building and uh, comes across this local condition which needs structural performance, the roof then adapts to that uh, local situation and supports the, the ramp. Um, again, dealing with the initial idea of controlling that moment and not just kind of creating uh, direct connections between them and letting uh, um, Maya, in this case, uh, decide what those geometries would be. Um, so those are the three moments. Uh, the, the program of the building is, is uh, replacing the Peterson Muse Car Museum on um, the corner of Wilshire and Fairfax. And um, so I, I, I wanted to treat it as a thesis, but also a real architectural project. So I also um, just wanted to incorporate it in some uh, programmatic elements. So the car museum was to uh, interweave the three types of vehicles around the site, the traffic, the, the museums in the main gallery space, as well as the um, cars in the parking garage. Um, and I guess that's it for now. Okay, before we go and introduce the jury, sorry, I'm supposed to be here at the Three Sarina Circus. Um, so, from my left, um, this is the, the first review on the afternoon session. Tom Winston, who teaches here on SIA, principal of Emergent. Next to him, Farda Colatan, teaches in Penn and Pratt in the east side of the world, or at least of this country. David Erman from Cerro and UCLA. Next to him, Kibi Sotama from Ohio State, former partner of Ocean North. Next to him, Craig Hodges from UCLA and Hodges and Fan. Peter Tesser, the local guy, Marcelo Spina, another local guy, Bill McDonald, chair of Pratt and partner of Colmac. And now, let's the class shall begin. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to show us something on the, on the animation? Um, yeah, some of these animations, like uh, this one in particular, are dealing with the growth of these pieces and how they kind of move and, it, and kind of take on these ro local rule sets. So how they, um, like this one, how this system kind of branches to move into the space to kind of uh, join with that interior stair piece. So again, it's how the surface kind of breaks down into kind of smaller elements that allow itself to weave through the space and perform kind of differently Um, which the section was a little darker, so you could see how the roof actually comes down to embrace, how the roof comes down, wraps around the ramp, and then branches down to become column supports beneath it. Um, what, so would you say that the stair and the ramp were the sort of uh, grain of sand and oyster? And kind of yeah. Well, I mean, those motivated most of the form, or right. by manipulating the strength. Yeah, so I, I decided those kind of two elements would anchor the project, and I kind of located them in the center of the project, and kind of grew out from there. So I, I designed like a normative shell, yeah. and then yeah, I kind of put that grain of sand in there and saw how it would and grow those out. Those were Maya 
that they were fully realized as kind of. Uh, yeah, it was a Maya dimension, but they were dimensional objects, quote unquote, virtual objects that you put in and then. Correct. Did, did, did you not think about sort of making a bunch of cars as virtual objects and having it react to them? Oh, like running cars through the. Well, I, I, it's not a stair museum, is it? A stair? No. Right, but at the same time, I mean, I wanted to focus on these ideas of the geometrical um, situations. I mean, the program kind of takes on takes a, a passenger seat to the to the ideas of geometry and form. You make a quick comment on sort of first in, first impression on the images. That I find it's it's a curiously a project that curiously hovers between a kind of painterly on one hand at some moments the images produce a kind of painterly feel, which is established by the the lines, the very graphic elements against the containing frame. But then there's then there's something that works against that. It's basically moments that are very deconstructivist in their nature, where you can perceive that that frame is actually not a frame that contains the painterly event but it, it's a primitive that gets deformed. Mm -hmm. And that stage is an entirely different kind of relationship, suddenly, which is a reading of a prim, you know, of a moment of deformation, of a story, of some sort of a you know, formative process. Mm -hmm. And I think those two effects are actually counterproductive when they fight against one another. And right. Needlessly, I'm for the painterly. I think that's more interesting and, and con contemporary. Right. In I mean, that was something I was aspects. aware of the deconstructivist feel, and we, me and Tom talked about it, how I didn't want to seem or make it look like these objects opposing each other throughout the building, but kind of create sinuous connections between them. So it, it was something I was struggling with, but um, I mean, I was aware of it. I, I tried massaging a little bit. But the irony of the project it, to me at least, is that you talk about it as if it's pretty purely designed from the inside out mm -hmm. in grown with this component system that's responsive. Mm -hmm. But when we look at the effects of it in the drawings that you've given us, mm -hmm. it actually looks much more designed from the outside in. Mm -hmm. And that, it's, that there's a kind of um, compositional act um, working on it. Like I scrunched it here, I jacked this corner open, you know, these are where my moves are going to occur more than it being an indexically grown formation. So, you know, the, the thesis either, either leads you to a point where it's not doing enough work in terms of what the aesthetic of it produces, so you get to go in and operate on it from the outside in mm -hmm. to get it to look the way you want to. <coughs> or you have to stipulate that this is actually the result of a very pure process, and this is what you get, and it's not compositional, which I don't believe. You know, which I don't believe that the faceting and the way the moves are constructed seems very outside in. The decon more, uh, I think very. I think the way Kiwi phrased it was right to the point. Right. Like it's acting on a frame from the outside mm -hmm. versus something that's working from stroke to stroke to stroke from the inside right. out. Yeah, I mean, we had talked about <coughs> some of the ideas, kind of. Uh, seem to lend themselves towards more of like a scripting type project where you would create this normative condition and then create these rules that you would just implant in and, and see how kind of infecting an area would then generate something. But I, I mean, I took, a, took on the approach to kind of, yeah, take a hands-on approach to kind of top down and designing the, these pieces, these moments. I kind of located these moments between systems and pick them out like which components would interact better with others and then once I decided once I decided that then I moved in and then designed those areas but see I think that the point it's an interesting point because on you know already illustrated but the relationship between one that it's sort of is a where you prepare an engine which kind of drives the project and you get a particular result and see opportunities that you can sort of then identify and uh, enhance um, versus this one, which actually you sort of very intentionally from the beginning saying that this is an area that I'm interested in dealing with, this is an area, this is an area, and what I'm going to be doing with that is 
making a sort of adaptive relationship between surface and strand, or exterior wall, interior stair, or roof truss and parking ramp. But once you, once you take that route, as opposed to the kind of engine where you're looking for opportunities to define architectural conditions, then you go back to the intentions, which is what is the thesis driving the selections of those regions? What are the offered techniques which allow you to declare that particular language? And then what are the programmatic and formal values that allow you to instinctually develop this kind of language versus another? Mm -hmm. So the, I mean, I can't just label that as painterly. I think if you're going to approach it with that kind of intentionality, then what do you hope to uh, gain, or what is the advantage of producing an architecture in this site, which, with this circumstance, in this way? Um, yeah, you brought up basically, yeah, the three components and how I came up with them, I guess, is um, I tried you know, I, I looked at different components and I studied their geometries or their tendencies or their phases in terms of when they're um, produced in, in construction and started creating links between them and doing like little case studies between, like for example, the, the um, corner element is just a study in surface to strand, whereas the stair and the, um, the uh, curtain wall or glass wall system was more about how a horizontal system meets with a, a vertical system and how those things would kind of mediate between each other. Mm -hmm. So it was about kind of, yeah, picking out components myself and not letting... Now, I guess my question is more about the advantage. So I understand what you've chosen, okay. and I understand the way you've done it. Um, what or I'm asking you to do is to... Behind it or? Not the reason behind it. Actually, I'm asking you to assess what advantage did that, did that give you architecturally. So if I deteriorate this corner, as you've done, mm -hmm. and I kind of flatten it from a depth condition to one which is mm -hmm. relatively lattice-like, mm -hmm. then it seems to me that I would have exactly that. I would move from a very deep condition mm -hmm. to a lattice-like one, which creates more of a porosity in certain areas, right. density in others. What did that foster in terms of the way in which you're thinking about this architecturally? And you seem to be suggesting that they're not just episodic, but they are, in fact, networked together, at least in terms of logic. Right. So the, the idea would be, what did you gain from the way that you've approached the project now given the result? So I'm sort of asking you yeah, uh, okay. so, yeah, if we the go gain here, because it, it, cause we're not talking about it really processally and uh, in related to the product. Mm -hmm. So if that's, the, if that's your gain, then I'm saying that then this is your product, you got to it in this way, what is the advantage that you produced because of this approach? Okay. Well. Um, I guess in some cases it would be like, for example, the, the corner element is, is once the objects transform in geometry, then naturally they can kind of become other things. So if it becomes, um, and you can see in this animation how it's a surface and becomes strand, and once it becomes this strand element, then that can now become a structural element because you can weave it through the space, you can connect it to other things, it's a little easier to kind of use that type of geometry. Um, whereas the uh, exterior wall stair connection, I kind of knew that that can generate kind of interesting uh, geometries that can then become spatial and not just about specific geometries or objects. But can I, can yeah. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I think, I mean, first of all, I think it's a beautiful project. It's a beautifully presented and rendered, and that's probably some of the comments of the painterly, but it feels to me that the way you're describing, and especially the kind of recurring use of the word geometry, is kind of, you know, backfire on you. Because I would argue that in, in this project, there's not really a kind of serious approach on geometry. That might mean nothing wrong in the context of what we are looking at, in terms of images and in terms of the result of the building. And I tell you why, I think the geometry could be seen in, con in the local context of the elements that are, are actually like somewhat collagistically, but really, really skillfully, collagistically kind of melded together. 
but that's not quite geometry, at, at least in the kind of more sort of you know, context that geometry as a word and as a kind of medium has been used in architecture. Not as something that either you have to look at the whole field and then begin to kind of operate locally, which seems to be what that's going on, or as a, you know, as a, uh, in a sort of more you know, deep con way. I think that's probably closer to what you're paid. The What worries me is that, and I know that it could not be solved, but it would actually mean the kind of serious operation in work in the metrics of how you design the thing, which I think is, a, is of value here because you're sort of looking at different systems that are somewhat fusing without losing its all independence. Exactly. I think it's a very important exactly. you know, approach. But it's not quite geometry what begins to bridge them all. And I think it needs to be at some level because let's say you need to build that. I mean, the sort of linear conditions in which you're sort of opening out or tearing apart suggest that there might be, you know, whatever the system that is inside the, you know, the surface that, you know, we're just seeing that smooth, that's, that has to be something there. And the fact of the matter is that we don't really know. And I'm sure you have because, you know, you designed this thing, whether there were like facets or there were lines or there were like creases or there were center lines that then subdivided and so on. Mm -hmm. That thing is not quite evident. And not that you have to show us how you did it. That's not necessarily the way you have to go on in a project. But it definitely, I will argue, because of some of the results, there doesn't seem to be that matrix there. And that's a little bit of a problem, at least in terms of the discussion that you're kind of, you know, moving towards. You know, I, I agree with all the comments about the, you know, the handsomeness of the project and the beauty of the renderings and so forth. But I, I worry about the fact that, that maybe your initiating premise was empty. That, you know, you've, you've got a very palpable situation. You've got a real strong, you know, programmatic element. And you've got a very, you know, in, in a certain way you've got a very Beaux-Arts kind of building. Mm -hmm. Because it's really a facade on a corner. Mm -hmm. It's it's very, very, very similar to the May Company building across the street. Mm -hmm. It's a different vocabulary. Mm -hmm. But volumetrically and in terms of um, the degree to which you challenge the program, it's a warehouse with a fancy front. And and I I, I keep thinking that the objective of the, of the building and of the program is to take things which are very valuable and very precious and that people really get into and to frame those things and to make them more immediate more sensuous, etc., and and so I'm I'm torn between my admiration for the for the actual physical nature of the building and its its role in the city right. and the drama. I, I don't see the drama of presenting something in this building. Yeah, it's interesting because if if you look at the way how you present on the screen, you get quite a different idea about the project. It's presented on the wall, at least that's kind of my impression. And I feel, I mean, again, I would also like to point out that I find the presentation quite beautiful. Um, but there, there are some some issues I'm, I'm also kind of trying to really understand. One of them, um, to me, is the notion of the component you're using. Um, because, I, see, I would argue that those aren't really components, or if they are, I don't really understand why you use the word component. Is, is that something you um, you know need to describe the process? Mm -hmm. um, because if I look at this right now, right, I mean it's, it's much more kind of the continuous deformation yeah. mm -hmm. of, of a surface into a lattice condition, um, which I think is very interesting, but, but how that becomes a component, which is a notion of discreteness, right, which then can be um, you know hopefully intelligently linked and be linked with other components in order to create a network type of situation is not something, in my opinion, that this project is about. Um, so I wonder if that's just a matter of um, using a certain terminology, or do you imagine this project to have some kind of a, you know, component-based logic? Um, or, you know, because I, I, I'm not quite seeing it. Right. Well, I guess I can answer Marcelo's and, and yours at the same time. Um, 
the, the idea of the component was about, in a, a lot of contemporary work is about masking the whole object and singularity and continuous edge and continuous form. And it was about not doing that, about showing columns, showing floor plates, showing uh, exterior wall, and not just about blending them and creating singularity between them. So when I, when I talk about components, it's about that so that when you see a column, you know it's a column, and you can read how that column changes to kind of right. communicate that, with. Then, then there is also another way, a contemporary way of understanding components, mm -hmm. which is not singular building elements like columns, right? But mm -hmm. something, particularly if you're interested in geometry, it has to do with you know more complex understanding of the geometry mm -hmm. and how they can be you know linked and processed in different ways. So. But I understand. I mean, basically, what you're saying is, you know, when you use the word component, it's just kind of showing me, you know, the structural condition. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. The, it rides a very dangerous territory for me there because the, like, the promised continuity of your initial moves is basically thwarted by a linguistic ambition, which is, I'm going to render a column as a column in something different than a mullion, and I'm actually going to collage them together. So the, you know, the promise of this not being assemblage, but deriving out of this, right, as one continuous cohesive system, mm -hmm. because of all the faceting, and I think because of a linguistic bias on your part, which is this stuff has to look different than that stuff. Mm -hmm. It actually ends up becoming not very continuous at moments. You know, there are parts of your renderings that are episodic, right? And well, they are so the, the cohesion of it falls apart, which is, the, is something that you're either not talking about or you're afraid of owning that. I'm not sure no, where I you mean, stand on that, but you know, it's, it's it, it was an a semiological argument at a certain point that works against principles of continuity, or the geometry and the component logic, those things are about smoothness and arguments for continuity. But basically, that's, that's a good comment. That more or less uh, coins what I, what I stated in the beginning. I think this is not a critique. It's more an observation on the project. But I think that the moments where it becomes coherent and cohesive are the ones where it manages to establish a painterly continuity. So basically, it establishes a field that's where you cannot read anything as an index or a sign. Mm -hmm. And the material effects, the layering, the directionality of the geometry uh, produce, especially these bottom two images, the night views mm -hmm. and the dark views, incredibly beautiful but very coherent objects which is very different from some of the other images that look, I mean, they look deconstructively familiar because you can see basically the primitive is deformation. You can see uh, columns, uh, structural members, and you can read it. So it, it stages two very different affects. One of kind of distracted attention of being engulfed in a painterly field, and the other one of reading the building, its process and its parts. Mm -hmm. And those two, are contradictory affects, and they contradict, they contradict the work against one another. Mm -hmm. And I think that's not good. And I don't know which way you want to push the project, or whether you're yeah, I mean, it was I, of it. Yeah, it was an intentional move to kind of create focal points, and not kind of blend them out throughout the building. So if you look at the plan, uh, you can kind of see it's pretty normative in, in a lot of the areas, but then you get these kind of but it's not, focal point is not what I mean. Reading is different. Reading is something, it's a distance analytical relationship to an object where I can see the deep the formative process of the object mm -hmm. or I can read its linguistic meaning. Or the painterly would produce an abstract uh, affect, something where I'm not really paying attention to the, uh, the environment, it's more about the atmosphere mm -hmm. and uh, in the, the mood it produces. The reading works directly against that. I'm so I'm just, it's an observation. It's so not, it's almost I like think a, Bill was asking basically which the difference way between the exterior the shot and of the project. I don't know. That. So that's, we don't get it wrong, it's an incredibly sophisticated project. And so is that an example of, let's say, the exterior to the interior shots? Or 
where it's more object it's a difference information. Between, like these images to these two images. So this moment and that moment versus what these two produce and the building that they describe. See, I, I would even extend that in, in saying that the, the, it's almost like you're, you're, you're very much putting yourself in a position of saying that here's a spot, here's a spot, here's a spot. I'm going to compose these as though they're operating together rather than saying that there is an actual connection, which means that if I make this more porous here, it's going to have an impact over here or on the interior. So there's a relationship which is networked, networks come up a number of times, between this, this, and the interior. That's what I think your intention mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I'm projecting that because you haven't really said that. No, uh, yeah. but, the, the, but what's happening is, and the criticism that you're hearing, is that these are spots which then participate in the same compositional language without necessarily having a direct effect or affect on these different regions. And, but either one that you choose, A or B, you get a 50-50 shot here. The <laughs> ultimately, what, what the other question I was asking was, what is the advantage of the result regardless mm -hmm. of your choice of A or B? Um, I, yeah, I mean, I guess this is a good example, a good shot of, of, of what it, how it, it kind of grows or, or moves through about, yeah, it is about kind of this central moment and how this moment diffuses itself or moves through or moves in or moves out of, of the space. But it is about this moment where there's the two entrance, the vehicular entrance and the pedestrian entrance, how those kind of push themselves into the building and wrap themselves around at the same time from that moment. And how there's three elements or three moments that I, I focus on, but there is kind of linking uh, geometries or, or uh, rationale between... What links them other than language? Other than, I mean, is, is, there, a, is there a force which actually deforms one and because of that deformation it has an impact? on the others, or is it really, when you say linked, I think you really mean compositionally linked, that you compose them to be linked on a, on a very visual level, on a very illustrative level. Yeah. yeah. Maybe a very simple example is when you started out, you were saying you called this structure and this not structure, mm -hmm. right? And so the medium, the medium that could transfer or communicate those elements, let's say, or that would act as the kind of medium for networking these things has been negated. You know, and I think that's maybe one of the problems that, you know, on a very simple level, um, that you know, you're calling some things structure but other things not. But that that huge plane is right. obviously structure. No, yeah, it is structure. Right. But you choose to not see it as such. So I think it is compositional, a compositional problem. And that the medium that could allow you to intensify, to create intensifications rather than, you know, uh, agglomerations on top of something. You know, it's kind of as if uh, that medium isn't alive, right, for you. And I think that's maybe a problem that doesn't allow these things to interact in the way that Bill was describing, which if I have, you know, each of these things has agency, but there's nothing connecting them you know, that would give them actually some ability to affect each other. To adapt. I adapt, guess that, yeah. That was actually the original thesis, as I understood, that this is an adaptive system. Mm -hmm. But if it's adaptive, then it should be, it should these be pulling on that. Being, you know, they they're should. adapting to each other or to certain external forces. But, but it seems as though it's compositional and, and illustrated. I think Peter's example at, at the detail really puts it in a nutshell. But I think the issue of composition, in my view, I think is an interesting way of how you're approaching it to the project. One thing I was wondering, the thing that struck me the moment when you were talking, when you were talking about aesthetic style, uh, which I think is a kind of an interesting two words to put together. Uh, and I was, I was looking, I, I think one of the strategies that I think your project would benefit and make it stronger if it would reveal less. I think for me, in terms of the composition, because I was looking at the animation, I think the most interesting part is when you start to articulate the, com the complexity that the project has with the interior, which is, in my view, way kind of a more sophisticated what it reveals. 
So I think, if, for example, the corner, I think, is way too exposed in terms of the composition. So if it was more hidden. I think some of the issues that you're talking about, of composition and aesthetics and style, I think it would make it more tighter. I'm not, say, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying that what it is that right now is bad. As you're saying, in terms of the degree about how much you, you reveal. Um, because that, for me, is kind of an interesting condition about, it's almost I was, I was thinking about when you start to look like erotic photograph and so on is how much reveal define a lot the affective conditions that will introduce and I think also will take care of the differentiation between the night shot and the day shot because you will start to have a more controlled environment within the project so I will say with the, the rules of composition I think those are kind of the elements of for me it's a matter of volume of calibration in terms of aesthetic that it seems to be like uh, maybe they have too many it's almost like overexposed some of the decisions. But uh, again, I'm not saying that in terms of that that's a failure. I think it's something that in this methodology is something that I think it can be improved. Um, it's almost like, for me, one of the problems that this kind of strategy always has are the corners. It's well to finish. I mean, like, in, in many, many weird, in, in, in a very weird way, these have like a kind of a Rafael Monero strategy. And he, he always had the problem when he hits the corner. Yeah, yeah. Because it's how you stop there. And, and I think one of the interesting ways, which is to don't show it, I mean, is to don't reveal the corner as an opening and keep it closed. And, and again, because again, for me, the most interesting part in the projects are the continuous facade, where well, they have a sense that it doesn't have an end. The moment that you start to close it, that's a problem. Because it's like the muscle, it's how you cut the muscle, right? Or how you stop that. Mm -hmm. um, I cannot even think in any good example on solar that problem. I mean, that's a still a deep problem. But I think uh, as a team yeah. argument, I think it will be worth it will be worth for you to explore it. Yeah, I've been trying to hold back a little bit. Um, I haven't spurred too much for me on this project, but I, I was actually um, surprised by how quickly everybody focused on the, the core problem of this project and how quickly they, they found kind of Achilles heel, which is the fact that it, in fact, was composed out of three completely separate parts. Yeah. And the thing about Kevin is that he's a master at, at kind of smoothing and synthesizing. Yeah. You know, Hernan knows this too. Um, and, and so he, he, almost, he almost succeeded in making us think that it was an adaptive system, in mm -hmm. fact, throughout the building, that has these moments of massive variation. But, but in a way, you know, in a way, I still wish that you had trusted your instincts at the very beginning of the project, that you would let the research kind of play itself out, mm -hmm. and really just listen to what you were saying, because you were saying all the right words at the beginning, and you just didn't trust it. And you made these little pieces, these moments that you kind of liked, and we both agreed these are potentials, but then when it came to making the building, yeah. you just put the pieces in sight yeah. and connected them with the building. Yeah, no, I mean... So, I think it was a huge learning I, I agree, experience. But what I agree, but what I really appreciate in yours, and I think in some of the ones we saw this afternoon, is I think part of that, that lost quality of the original strategy is the ambition to really produce a very reliable project at the end. And that part, sometimes, sometimes that is, it's, mm -hmm. it's hard to put that together. So, I appreciate that. He puts it into a project that, it, 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 I mean, he behaved like a project, he looked like a project, and he had all that possibility. Yeah. I, I, it, it's kind of weird to say that in a school of architecture. <laughs> but just in the like context one. of this discussion, yeah. it's kind of refreshing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, at the end, okay, there is a project <laughs> uh, for, for a change, right? <laughs> No, it's a wonder, it's a wonderful project, though, Kevin. So. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Tom experienced it. It was a lot of moving forward and moving back, not trusting. What and I was you're doing. starting to get into a Polish <laughs> territory. Don't go there. <laughs> <laughs> he can say that. He's the advisor. You <laughs> So you did well. So don't don't apologize. Any final comments before we move on? I don't know. I mean, I would like to. I think the strategy of starting with three different conditions and synthesizing them through design, I think you could you could design or you could do it. I mean I, I think you could also take some if you took these some of these comments, I think you could also produce a pretty good building just by designing it. Because the work so far is very very impressive. And the good comments are I mean it's it's at a point where I'd like to go and change things and fix things and there's moments that really 
extensively relate with one another. Um, so I created a composite of a frame system. I started with the prime big three, structure, skin, and circulation, and sort of how to coordinate these. And I created a, a five-story cluster that would work for an office cluster and then would eventually deploy out to the landscape. So each, of these, so each of the items in this cluster would have a particular sort of um, tectonic and topological uh, history that would sort of control its deployment. Um, and what I can show you here is an early investigation into sort of how that would work. And those four on the left, those studies on the left were sort of how to helically reinforce a module um, and how to let it sort of, how to let the, the topology of the item sort of um, open itself to um, influence by others. During that investigation, it really started to become clear that I was getting tied to topology, that, that the type and the, and the nature of the form was going to determine sort of the deployment. And so I decided to take a step back and start thinking about things a little bit more um, in terms of smaller parts specialized. And I began this, these studies on sort of a truss frame um, that would sort of interlock two pieces of the truss frame. One of them is here. One of them is here, um, and give me sort of a module that can move out and and deploy without being without needing infinite variation and if infinite deformation. Um, so from there, again, I I began to look at the secondary system, skin and circulation, and I created sort of this the module and deployed it. One of the things that became kind of apparent during this thing when I hit the tower portion of it, because originally this was supposed to be sort of a tower dissolving the landscape, was that the big problem was the problem of the tower, how to deal with repetition and how to deal with um, systems without it being collage and without it being, um, without, it need, without it owing itself completely to deformation and infinite variation. So it, it began this dialogue of, sort of the parts of the whole, the local to the global, and how they relate to each other. Um, sorry, no. Um, so, during this, this investigation of the tower, I started to think about um, control models. I was actually considering control models from the beginning. How do you subordinate this, these multiples to become a single, instead of it being sort of the aesthetics of the multiple, sort of this collage dump of things together? And I was, you know, the classic, the classic way to do that is through form or topology. But I decided to try something a little bit different to deal with, to try and understand the building in terms of texture and sort of how components and modules and parts can sort of be condensed together and I can use tex textural variations to sort of control the aesthetics and the composition of the item. So, I began to differentiate like a smooth skin versus a rough skin. I, let the, I'm, I tried to let the structure sort of create a textural quality instead of an overly mechanical quality. So subordinating these things um, together 
allowing them to not sort of just be that collage. Um, sorry. Bad. Um, I guess I'll end there. Wait for the Q&A. Ask you a question um, in terms of the component issue you just brought up. Um, when you talk about components, you talk. I mean, I can see you have like base modules, etc. Um, but you also said like local and global. Um, can you point out, like within the structural studies, how the component system um, negotiates between? The local well, what, what happened was, sort of when I was doing these investigations, it, it became clear that they were exclusively local, and they were exclusively local, and they would repeat, and you could deform the whole thing, but sort of the nature of the item is the nature of the whole. Um, I think the relationship of the structure to, to a global combination, I mean, it, it has its local quality, has to do with sort of the scale of it, sort of shrinking it down and letting it sort of be deployed as texture, as sort of so letting it be deployed as texture, as sort of a composite, you know what I mean? So the component dissolved, hopefully in the form, dissolved in, back inwards to the structure and wasn't just component. Um, it was one of those items, you know, that you try and balance that against the skin versus the circulation system and sort of not let it owe itself entirely to the, to the repetition of that single module. To me it sounds looks like you have two, if you're trying to escape collage, you have two things working against the collage. I'm not sure, but I offer these. Either it's you manage to reverse the part of relationship so that the part matters more than the whole and it overwhelms the whole. Mm -hmm. Or then the building lends itself in some sort of an ontology of a ski boot or, or an artifact <coughs> that also has the capacity of you know, uh, overwhelming the part into something that's perceived to be an object. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, those are the two things that I see going on. I can't quite see the pattern doing the work of uh, coherence, producing coherence with solving the part into the whole. So I think it's the first reaction when you see it, it looks like an artifact. Or that the part looks so celebrated that it's, it takes the front center stage as opposed to the whole. Yeah, I mean, sorry. No, the parts are. I assume the parts are supposed to be subordinated. Yeah. Is the idea. That was the idea. But I'm a little bit parallel. The, the, your, the drawing next to you. The, these pieces, these increments that go through. Yeah. Which was these? No, the, these guys. Yeah. yeah. The stages that you're talking yeah. Could you? I kind of sense a like contamination in a way. Kind of an older idea. <laughs> Think of a Rogers or Grimshaw yeah, yeah. or Foster. <laughs> but, but a, a much more conventional idea of hierarchy and of, um, of that notion of description of parts versus a very, very different idea of a, of, of a subordinated total organism. Yeah. And it seems that the, the drawings kind of hover. See, I, I tend to, I can look at this and I see it as actually kind of a singularity. And, uh, and I look at this one and uh, those pieces, it just seems like, are you talking about that or? I think literally contaminated somehow. You, it's right. You, yeah. I mean, I, I wasn't looking to sort of. I was looking for the parts to be celebrated because I don't know. I mean, through my time here, I've had my area of interest has been that um, that when you work from base apology from a base idea, it doesn't allow things to be added on. And I guess that that celebration of parts, the, the sort of the accentuating of the individual pieces, but restraining them to the composition is sort of what I was interested in, in discovering here. Um, and I, I don't know if it was accomplished, but it was, it's not like a pure celebration, but I wanted, I wanted the pieces to be necessary to each other. You know what I mean? Not totally collage and not totally. But, but there's, if, if I look at this serious one, which I find really, really beautiful, and I wonder if one would actually go through the and according to a certain local input, you transition through these conditions, and that would actually become a legible condition of the overall pattern, as you call it, mm -hmm. rather than switching around and really seemingly becoming a more kind of conventional notion of high-rise, high-tech type of building. I mean, wouldn't, wouldn't that be a way of 
again, I don't, you know, the distinction between component and the whole, I think, is really useful and helpful when it transitions from one to the other without one particular you know, kind of threshold. The moment it becomes just another module, and then, you know, we are bound to add a module to it. But I think when I look at this, um, it appears to me, I mean, you were just on the verge of kind of developing this really interesting lattice that according to, you know, again, specific input would transition in order to, you know, have different type of things, which then again, you as an architect can take advantage of. Yeah, I, I totally agree important. with that. I think, like, s sitting over here, I think, I, I thought we were going to look at a cellular project. Yeah. So you kind of developed a unit, and it looked like you started to experiment with ways of attaching them to each other and degrees of differentiation. But then the image next to you over there, I mean, it's uh, the only gradient or difference between the individual cells is a kind of compositional one. You just stretched it in the middle. And there's not really a relationship to maybe other kinds of, of criteria, like, for instance, maybe structural criteria that would, that would allow these cells to, you know, thicken up in certain areas or bunch together or become more numerous or all those different kinds of, of gradations. Yeah. Well, it, it, was, it wasn't intended to be a, it. Was Intended not to be a cellular project, um, which. But I'm not sure if the other end of the spectrum is like a, a more kind of mechanical project. It, it, it probably is, but I mean, personally, I was looking to sort of, I was looking at some level to, to give myself a friction to work against, to not use infinite variation in the building, to not use infinite deformation, um, to try and restrain the actions, and whether or not that was, a, whether or not that was the proper move, I don't know. But no, I think so actually, I think it's a great way to approach it, but I think that you haven't determined what what we'd all like to believe is that the, the bottom row here is in fact not just samples of what you've done, but actually a range of the unit, not the cell, to be able to go from this kind of kernel to that kind of kernel, remaining within the same uh, vari variation array, if you want, which then has particular strategies of accumulation. And I think that's, that is a very noble intent. And I think that what happens here is that um, you get into, I think, mean, fairness, how much the use of the term module is like somewhat of a stake through the heart, but the but should be well taken. I think that there's the, the way that this is uh, arrayed, you've chosen to show us much more of a modular relationship with scale transitions rather than real variation built on the values of how it can accumulate or how it could accumulate in several different ways. And one way to present that idea, because I think you've really participated with that in this row on the bottom here, would have been actually to show a number of variations of the ways in which this could have accumulated and the ways it could have grown differently given different circumstance and different intent. It seems like this is more of an aggregate model. And it would, it would lead you to a much more expansive ideas of spatial models. So when you finally look at this, you go, oh dear. <laughs> or, well, there it is again. And, after, and it seems like this is going to be one of the potentials to lead you away from that. Well, the, Radically different, you understand? Mm -hmm. A spatial model that would be take you someplace completely different. Yeah. The theory of this stuff, I think, is that you could produce a multiplicity of architectures within the same system without coming at it uh, having a different architecture for a different system for each architecture, right? Mm -hmm. So if you look at this in relation to the Gherkin, which is a XY scaling and rotation problem in terms of stacking floor plates and accumulation, Foster gets two kinds of architecture out of it, the void and the solid, right? And it twists up and through it. And I think the evaluation for you should be in these kinds of axons, where you actually, at the end of the day, you end up with a similar binary architecture, right? You have A, and I've got B, and I'm not getting a C or a D out of it, right? But I think the seduction of these is that we all believe that those could produce more than a lobby that moves up and through the building and connects the tower to the plinth, but it produces bubbles, it produces pockets, it pushes the structure to the edge at moments, it accumulates it in the center at other moments, so that you, you know, if I'm on floor 55, I'm in a very different architecture in certain areas of the floor plates than I would be on 22, than I would be on 10. 
So that, I mean, the, the postulation of accumulation is that it actually should produce more well, rather than two. I mean, with more qualities. Yeah. More, yeah. Like, what you're saying is like very important. To just, there's a qualitative difference in the accumulation and assemblage strategically and then also tactically within it, uh, the construct itself. And what's happening here is you have all kinds of play across the span, but when we actually go to the power, that actually becomes much more modularly related than and scalar related than actually the degrees of qualities which you might have wanted to use as an intentionality for the array of accumulation. Of course, this is interesting too, because if you really pursue the idea of aggregates, there would be a new synthesis as they're touching that would deal with the softy problem 40 years ago of redundancy. These aren't aggregates that are touching each other as you as you explore this aggregation. There's going to be new right mm -hmm. synthesis of the connections, and it lead you to uh, kind of infinite numbers of possibilities. Yeah, yeah, okay. Which was very good because you got everyone talking the way you wanted them to talk, I could tell. You know, a student always sets the agenda. What what he wants to say in this case is what you, know, you guys end up talking about because you take take it seriously. I just came in, so I'm just reading the drawings mainly and listening to his comments. Um, I think I get the drift of it just from the drawings, which is what one should be able to do in our field, right? I mean, the, the verbal explanation is helpful. But I would say that typologically, this is um, has a long history, you know, the kind of tower and slab, and then the, I don't know what this uh, uh, is here, what this space is, some sort of uh, public space? Or? Yeah, it was, it was. I okay, so the tower with the public, I mean, this is a diagram we've seen since the 50s. You know, whether it's Lever House and the density of New York or, you know, various buildings around the country. So the, the typology, the part T, as we used to call it, I don't know if that term is used anymore, is a familiar one. So what seemed, there seem to be several innovations. One is that the internal configuration of space varies. Now, I would just like to know why. Why does it vary? What's the point? I mean, if you take the typical Lever House or Seagram building, they're all the same, right? And the, the, what's the presumption of that? But basically, it's a flexible, universal space, as Mies would have called it. So anyone can move in that kind of envelope and do what they want inside within the boundaries. So, but why make these variations? Maybe you covered that. Maybe it's been thoroughly discussed. Well, I, I don't think I did. I think I think I glossed over some of that, and I should probably go back to it. Um, well, I'd like to know because the typology is familiar. Therefore, I'd like to, you know, we understand the reason for the typology of the of the slab or tower and the, um, the public space next to it. So now you made the variation. I just want to know what the difference is. Why we need these variations? Well, it's it's not well. So the program of the project. I'll go there and I'll. Okay. Well, sorry, no, I don't want to bore everybody because you know. No, no, no. I, I, I miss. I missed this one. So oh, okay. This is completely out of me. The program of the project was based off of uh, water pipes and pumping machines that the building <coughs> club had uh, about in Chicago, about reusing the river and sort of um, opening it up. So the base of it is this is a water taxi station that would allow for sort of commuting, using, utilizing the river more. So that blue stuff is water. Yes, the blue stuff is water. <laughs> Um, <laughs> now you learn something. So, what I didn't hit was I, I stick with a typical slab configuration. The module is pretty static through the top, but then as it takes the deformation, the floor plate flows and the structure binds into itself. Um, and you can see a little bit of it here. It's not super clear. Um, there's supposed to be a model for that. That as it goes down, as that as the profile of the entire building reduces, the, the slabs blend out to a single floor. So it switches from the four floor configuration to the single floor configuration. And then it opens back up as you hit near the lobby. Um, so the module breaks, but it, it stays, I mean, the, the topology shifts slightly, but it stays in that sort of modular area that I've been getting hit on through this conversation. <laughs> so you're, you're really, I don't think the, I mean, personally, maybe I see it in it. I don't think the problem is the modularity project for me. I think 
but the problem that I will see, not that I'm an advocate of modularity, is that there's not enough modularity uh, when the project kind of emerges. Right? It's been, you know, sort of made at once. It has to sort of at once level that is like, you know, sort of a big gesture that emerges from the ground. Because everything else, it seems that it could kind of yield either sort of modular moments if you let them just be a stack of the same or more kind of playful local conditions where, you know, some of the interesting stuff that we're all, you know, captivated with, you know, would emerge. But the thing is that some of the stuff that is common in the building as a whole is very much made as a kind of, you know, what I believe, you know, a kind of gesture, where, like, you know, like this sort of big piece that seems like somewhat out of scale, with, you know, sort of conglomerate of all these pieces and the curve and the way it kind of meets the ground and, it's all, you know, hidden. Yeah, I mean, that's I, was, I, I, would, I was trying to shift out of that scale. I mean, whether or not that was sort of, again, whether or not that was yeah. perfect. I was trying not to sort of be stuck at that scale, to yeah. work from the smaller scale, put it to the bigger scale, and then cross it. Um, I didn't want it to sort of be, and this is when I said earlier that I didn't want it to be a cellular project. I didn't want it to be owed entirely to the sort of characteristics of the single cell. It was, it's that, it's that bring I think, you know, by, by, by avoiding that, you went back to a kind of even older, and more traditional way of producing, which is a sort of, you know, gesture. Well, and it's but not, I mean, so, it's I mean, not in alignment with the main idea. I won't use the word, when you said typology, these guys all just about busted up laughing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but look at it's, it. It's, it's, it's structured. This piece here, I mean, it has a, a single, and a single, it has a single idea. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's about the continuity of a surface, horizontal, vertical, mm -hmm. and the relationship of building and ground as a single idea versus the two things, right? Which op was yeah. operational for quite a few thousand years, right? And it seems as though that the, um, the, the, the incremental idea is, has to do with the continuity of that surface. And what's happening here is you believe to something and maybe that's tectonic. And you, you, it's not any longer about your project, and it's a very, very straightforward idea, right? And then you see problems. There's certain drawings that are not particularly kind of interesting because they, they don't help us because they, for me, this is the, by far the, right? It's one of the most useful because you can completely see the idea, but it seems to be it's this surface that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. And that's, and then if you go back to the incremental, the strategy of these recently, well, bingo, you're putting these two, well, the tectonic and subspatial, or the spatial organization thing you're making, right? Mm -hmm. Which is converting well, from surface to, to volume. Yeah, and yeah, it seems as though that's the, that's the problem you're, you're grappling with. Yeah. But when one makes uh, a kind of set of differences, there's got to be a, a strategy behind it. There's got to be some idea behind it. It's just not differences just to be different. There has to be some strategy. This type of tower, what is, it's an office building? Or? Yeah, it's an office building. Okay, it's an office building. So what's your, you know, in, really, what's your take on an office building? Why does it need to have... Uh, well, let me go the other way around. The, the, no, I, the I, idea I, I, manipulates. I want to learn. I, I, well, I would said the organizational idea manipulates reality, not the other way around. Otherwise, you just here it is. Yeah. And so you go. Well, first yeah, of all, well, you, well, learn, you want diverse yeah, functions. Not, you want sure. functions that don't take horizontal floor slabs. You don't want I equality. Want, I just want an, you I, keep I want working. A concept here. I haven't heard the concept. I see the forms. I don't have a concept. Well, I think. I think it's, it goes. Oh, sorry, Craig. I think you're just dancing around it. I think Lev began sort of inferring this, you're dancing around the idea that in fact it's a gesture that you wanted to make on, you know, on the skyline. Mm -hmm. And you then reverse engineered it into a structure which was malleable enough to kind of achieve that, yeah. rather than simply saying, I'm trying to create an image here which has a certain kind of swoopy quality. But, you know, no, but, you, I mean, no, but you've got to answer his question. The answer is that office space is not homogeneous, yeah. period. That's your, that's your research. Well, I think, but I think but also, yeah, to I assume think, it's homogeneous and work in your project, you've got a problem. Yeah, I think I, Lev's question is a good one. I think that's what one of you became interested in your program. Did that mean something? No, no, but, but actually, but actually. <laughs> But if you're interested in form, you have to be interested in the program, right? But not, but not even the program. You can't yeah. even well, not really separate about things. About this, this gets back to the same thing. Is this the appropriate way to achieve that image? Which is because it's a confusing image. Yeah. Well, what, I, what 